This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. All Hit Radio. Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. Welcome back to the X Zone, everyone. My name is Rob McConnell. We're coming to you live and around the world from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. If you'd like to give us a call, worldwide, toll-free, 1-800-610-7035. My email address is xzone at xzoneradiotv.com. On all social media sites, xzoneradiotv. And um, if you'd like to listen to the Exxon 24-7-365, as well as the live show from 8 p.m. Eastern until midnight, www.exoneradiotv.com. My guest this hour is Linda West, and Linda is an internationally recognized spiritual advisor, psychic medium, and motivational speaker. Linda has a master's degree in metaphysics. Her intuitive insights have empowered thousands of people to understand how their spiritual, emotional, physical, and mental bodies work together to create individual empowerment. As a metaphysician, Linda combines a personalized blend of teacher, psychologist, spiritual healer, and counselor. With applied psychology, universal spiritual truths, and her tremendous psychic gifts, she connects with the universal energy to provide vital insights, answers, guidance, and perspective. Her website, lindawest-medium.com. And Linda, welcome to the X-Zone. I can hear you now, my dear. Welcome to the X Zone, uh, Linda. Excellent. Welcome to the X Zone, uh, and and tell us how you got started on your your quest, your crusade to not only being a spiritual advisor, psychic medium, motivational speaker, but also the author of a, uh, Eight Keys, a special delivery message from the angels. Well, the uh, the journey is is divine, <laughs> as we all know. There's mm-hmm. no coincidence as to you put things together in your life, but I, I grew up in a sexually, physically, and emotionally abusive home um, and in my childhood, and I was I always considered myself as a child and into my early 20s as being invisible, mm-hmm. and it, it's just a journey from being invisible to connecting spiritually, and what I call myself now is the goddess, and um, the book is that journey. My book, The Eight Keys, is the journey that I make. And the eight keys is, is the uh, a spiritual guidance, how we open up to, to being empowered, because we're really not taught in this world to, to be empowered. We're, we really aren't taught to be connected. We, every single one of us is born psychic, mm-hmm. but most people don't know that, or most people say, hey, it's not true, or, or it's, it's not correct. But in the world that we live in, and especially in 2015, you and I both know there's a lot of stuff going on, and part of that is because the frequency on the planet is so high now, and this energy, this high spiritual energy is affecting each and every one of us, and that's my job is to help people understand that and to empower them the way my journey got me going. Why do you call yourself goddess? <laughs> I, I think that's the appropriate uh, connection that I have made. It took me quite a long time on my journey mm-hmm. to realize that, that, that what people call the God energy, and they usually refer to it as a he, mm-hmm. um, as a father-type figure, when actually the God energy is basically the love energy that holds the planets in place. But 
goddess is someone who is aware of the potent spiritual energy that is within her and one that uses that energy um, and that love energy to uh, create the life of I've done it let me let me put it this way sure. I've created the life of my dream Manif- through manifestation through that empowerment but didn't you also <laughs> didn't you also create this the the what you're doing as as your as your dream job or your dream uh, yeah. position because you worked at it that it didn't come easy it wasn't as if you no. went to bed one night and said geez I wish I had the job of my dreams and poof the next morning there it was isn't that interesting I always uh, that's the way I would like things to go mm-hmm. <laughs> um, yeah but no it's it's a journey that we take awareness is a journey that we take um, we are taught to be separate. We are taught that there's a God outside of us. Right. And as we grow up and as we experience things, we realize that there's so much more going on in the world. By the time I had reached my 30s, I was in such a depressed state mm-hmm. because I couldn't remember anything of my childhood before the age of 10. And that those memories were crying to get out of me. Those memories were, were crying to be, to, uh, to be released like so many people out there. So we make that journey on this planet, and we hope that that journey takes us to a better place. Some people never get out of their addictive behaviors. I had a lot of addictive behaviors. I had a lot of depression, Mm -hmm. um, anxiety, uh, anxiety attacks. um, And I found that doctors couldn't help me, psychologists couldn't help me. Uh, the, the, because they're missing that that one little thing, that connection to the spiritual, that connection to that higher power that's within each one of us. So my journey, yes, was I'm uh, I'm 61 years old. Mm-hmm. I figure I I made it to goddess when I was about 50. Now you and see, now I'm just enjoying myself. <laughs> yeah, ac- according to the the dictionary, the 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 definition of goddess is a female being of supernatural powers or attributes believed and worshipped by a people. Number two, often goddess, a female being believed to be the source of life and being and worshipped as the principal deity in various religions. So if these are the definitions... Yeah, so so my question to you is does your lifestyle fit any of these accepted definitions of goddess? Absolutely. I am magic. I am magic because everything I ask for, I get. Mm-hmm. Because um, I am working with the universal power. What you send out is what you get back. Sure. When you when I when I manifest, it is from a place of believing. I know when I say, "Oh, you know, open up this door," or mm-hmm. "I need more money," or "I want to go here." These these things open up for me, and it is magical. And it's not just me; it's anyone about the deity, about being worshipped, I understand myself now. I love myself now. I don't particularly want anybody else to fall on their knees and worship me. They need to do it for themselves. When we love and adore ourselves, mm-hmm. we have that power within Well, it, it's, it's very that, simple. It's a well-known fact that if you don't love you, if you can't love yourself, no one else will. Like, this isn't magic. Exactly. This isn't a mystery. This is a known fact. Right, but isn't it? it but to those of us who have discovered it, mm-hmm. to those of us who have been on the other side of things, the darker side, the depressive side, who have emerged into this higher frequency, mm-hmm. and and who have come out of the other, it's like wow, it is magic, and it's not well known. Yeah. So can you, uh, you know, like it's a not number well known, and that's the shame of it. A number of the people, the world, a number of the of, of the people that I've talked to who find themselves as being psychics or um, divinators or mediums all have one thing in common. The, the majority have come from abusive relationships or abusive childhoods. Why is that? I think we set it up before we show up here. I know we set it up before we show up here. I mean, who would, who would agree to that kind of crap before you, before you come? That's because right. And, and, been... and who would ever want that type of crap right. or want to submit themselves to that kind of crap? It makes That's no sense. Sure. It makes no sense to me. So why would you want to come here? Okay, I'll tell you and why. Wait a sec. It makes wait a second. Sense. Linda, let me finish my sentences, please. Okay. You know, why would anyone, and, and personally, I don't believe that, 
that people make these plans and they subject themselves to the, the horrors and the crap that we see so many people go through. But if it does happen, why would they do it? Can I answer? No, you can. Okay. We do it because it was that experience in my childhood mm -hmm. that propelled me forward to tap into the higher frequencies that I am in now. It was those experiences of, of uh, low self-esteem, the abuse, um, the confusion, not having confidence in myself mm -hmm. that propelled me to find out why I was depressed, why I, I um, um, couldn't seem to function in this world, why I couldn't live in present moment. And it was that journey and those people that were in my life that, that I decided to make the decision. And if it wasn't for that, I don't know where I'd be. To make the decision to get healthy, physically, emotionally, spiritually. And that door opened. And because of what happened to me, mm -hmm. because of those people that were in my life, I have a clearer vision of who I am. And therefore, because of what I do, I can help others make their journey also a lot easier too now that i understand it oh, okay so and I think, i'm sorry go, go ahead. ahead no no go ahead i was going to say i think we do plan it ahead of time i don't think things happen randomly at all mm -hmm. i don't think we live in a random universe where you just suddenly somebody gets the lottery ticket and wins the billion and and you get the shaft i don't think there's anything along those lines here i think there's a soul that is conscious I think there is a soul that taps into the higher frequency. I think we make those plans before we come. It's not set in stone. That's what people don't understand. We're not talking about you have to do this. Mm -hmm. You are given circumstances, and then it's always about choices. I could have just as easily become a drunk or an, a, addicted to drugs or any of those other things, but I chose to move forward like so many other people do because of what happened to me. Okay, I, I can understand that, and I can appreciate that, and in fact, I, I applaud that. So where does the supernatural fit into all this when you actually did all the work yourself? Well, the, um, the universe responds. Everything is energy. Mm -hmm. We cannot forget that. The body is energy. The soul is energy. We, when we pass away here, we drop a physical body, but mm -hmm. energy continues. Energy never dies, and that's what people don't realize. We're looking at our physical world through physical eyes, mm -hmm. and we think, wow, this, this is it. This is all I can have. This is all I can do based on what I see. But there's more that goes on in different dimensions and different frequencies, and the energy that you tap into is the energy that you create in your life based on how you feel about yourself. Well, I, mean, I mean, when I was going through what I was going through, it's like my life sucked. Mm -hmm. Everything, you know, it's like, it was terrible. I knew if I got, I knew if something good happened to me, that something bad would match it. And because I believed it, and because I knew it to be true, it was the truth of my life. And now I know that what I create through my thoughts is what my world is. And I know that when I ask for something, it shows up. I know that whatever I need is, is going to be there. My life is filled with bliss, mm -hmm. and I am not exaggerating. Okay, so... I, everything I ask for, I get. All, all right. It's an, amazing, it's an amazing way to live. It's the energy. What you send out is what yeah. you get back. Yeah, it's called karma. What you send out... Yeah, all right. It, it, yeah, it's energy. Okay, so... I mean, Einstein understood it, and he mm -hmm. was... In the fifties, he understood. Right, and, um, and there are previous religious that. philosophers in ancient times who understood it as well. Yes, you know. So we're I, not taught it though, because it's empowering. Is it the Rob fact is that empowering. is it the fact that it's empowering, or it's a, or could it be that it just doesn't work for everybody? And if it doesn't work for everybody, how can we say that this is real? Well, it absolutely does work for everybody. Everybody uh, pretty much gets what they choose to believe in. Well, I find it that works for everybody. I, I, energy is I, I, energy. I find it's, that hard to believe does. when I when I look at all the all the sickness in the world, all the hunger in the world, all the wars in the world. 
uh, the the climate, the condition of this planet. You know, I, I find that very hard to believe that everyone in Africa, Ethiopia, and all these countries who don't have a glass of water to drink are responsible for that. Really? Yeah. You find how, that hard to believe how can, that how can souls they, would come? Yeah, I find that I find that ludicrous. It doesn't make sense to me. Well, it's not meant to make sense to all of us. Why not? In, in if it's reality, real, if it's real, it should make sense to everyone. No, not necessarily. We are most people look at the world through the physical, through their physical eyes, as I said. But isn't that what a realist uh, is about? What? It, Pardon me? Isn't that what being a realist is about? Because, you know, uh, you, just, you, you. you just can't stick your head in the sand and wish that when you pull your head out of the sand, the world is going to be a better place. We can all sit around a campfire, hold hands, and sing Kumbaya. It doesn't work like that. Perhaps not. But why wouldn't we have the power to change the situation we are in? Why couldn't we tap into that energy of the planet, that, that the same energy that holds the planets in place, the same energy that makes the flowers grow, the same energy that, that it's consciousness. You're talking about the people in Africa. You're talking about climate change. Uh -huh. You're talking about... Um, the real world. Um, choices. The, the, the real world. Yeah. What is? People are choosing to hate. People uh -huh. are choosing to kill each other. People are choosing to... Uh, and, and every single country gets the leadership it deserves based mm -hmm. on its consciousness. Everything is energy and everything is consciousness. I can't make choices or why a soul mm -hmm. would come to the planet and go, I'm just so happy it's not me. I don't have to live this lifetime. And of course, I believe there's more than more than one lifetime so sure. from, from what I've seen. And uh, this lifetime, uh, I came this far. Good for me. Now I can teach other people to be empowered too. The other lifetimes, other souls that are doing what they're doing, um, that that's are? their choice. That's their, I mean, I've, I've had past life regression um, that I've done, and some of them mm -hmm. were pretty friggin' nasty. You and know, each one of them is supposed to advance it, move us forward. In but energy. aren't we supposed to help each other out in this in this world, <laughs> in this existence? Wouldn't aren't that is be it, nice? Well, isn't that the way that that the that the masters, whether they're the Hindu masters, the yogis, the monks, the Buddhists, all the all the philosophers out there, yeah. say we're supposed to help each other. Even you know, like look at the religions, you know. Yeah. So so you know if. If what's the question? No, no, it's a statement. It's not a question. There's a difference. If okay, if this is real, like we all, all make right. these uh, these these plans before we come here, and that you know we're not you know geez uh, geez people in Africa, it sucks to be you. Geez people in New York City who don't have a place to live, you're living on top of the subway uh, grates on cardboard. It sucks to be you. You know it. Something is very wrong here, because if we're saying that certain people have the ability to to manifest a wonderful life, and yet we're not responsible for those whose lives suck? I didn't say that. Well, what did you say then? I said, each of us choose mm -hmm. and make this journey on this planet for... Okay, you're you're looking at the world through three dimensional eyes. Physical world is well, of course, yeah. What you're yeah, and what you're missing is the multi dimensional um, synchronistic uh, energy that is out there. The person who's who's homeless, mm -hmm. uh, as you said, let's say in New York and living in the subway and yeah. drinking. Somebody yeah. sees him. Mm -hmm. Somebody sees that person and their heart starts to break and it makes an impression on them. Right. A soul comes to the planet to make an impact on another soul. Um, certain conditions apply to people in Africa to, to bring out the compassion in other people. There's a lot of energy working out there. I don't, I'm not even going to pretend mm -hmm. to understand what every soul's purpose on this planet is. But I know that the people who I reach, I know that the people that show up at my door, mm -hmm. who come to me, who, who show up at my workshops, mm -hmm. that they walk out of there 
feeling better about who they are, understanding energy, and understanding how to use that energy in their lives. And this is available to every single person who chooses to have it. Because you hear all the time of, of people who have left their circumstances and moved into other circumstances and built for themselves the life that they wanted to have. Mm-hmm. It is always possible. It is always possible. All right. And it is our right. job as mm-hmm. individuals to have love and compassion. You are absolutely correct in that. Yeah. Do people do that? No, they don't. Well, maybe but not all people choice. do, but I do. The people that I know I that are in my circle do. My many employees do. do. And you know what? I don't exactly. be- and you know what? I don't I don't believe in that you have to go through a rotten life to you know to find your way to a better life i i don't believe i I agree with you you know i agree my philosophy has always been the difference between a dream and reality is making it happen there were three things i I wanted to do when i was a kid i wanted to be a cop i wanted to play in a rock and roll band and i wanted to be in broadcasting and i've done all three and i'm proud of what i've done and i go out of my way In fact, it's not going out of my way because it's part of my daily routine to help people I don't know. This is part of my daily routine. Okay, so whether it's it's you go to church, some people go to church, they get the same feeling when they walk out of church as the people that you just described who go to you, your workshops and feel that uh, and who you teach how to use energy. So what is the difference between a person going to church and believing in themselves or in their deity and a person going to you and believing in what you teach them? The person who goes to church will pray, and if they believe, and in my book, belief is the strongest power in the universe, in the universe they will get the results that they're seeking. When, when unbeknownst to them, they are making it happen because of the actions they are taking. Right. So what is, is the difference? Real, every, mm-hmm. Let me put it this way. Every single person is different. Otherwise, we'd all be dressing in the same clothes. Otherwise, yeah. we'd all be you know, reading the same books. Mm-hmm. Every single soul has evolved to a certain point. And what it took to impact me in this lifetime isn't the same thing that it took to impact you. Mm-hmm. We can come to the same conclusion in our lives, and only we make it in a different way. Every single soul has their journey. Every single person has their journey. My daughter did it. Uh, she's now 25 years old, but mm-hmm. we went through hell with her. She was a meth addict. And that was a heck of a journey and lessons that I needed to learn and lessons that she mm-hmm. needed to learn, and she's clean and sober and, and the most marvelous person you'd ever want to meet now. We all have our journey. To criticize one person's journey or to compare it to someone else's journey is kind of ludicrous because we're all all um, walking in our own shoes. But Whether all... somebody goes to church, mm-hmm. if someone goes to church and they come out of there feeling empowered, yep. <laughs> awesome. Exactly. If they come out of church and they're like, oh, my God, I hate immigrants and mm-hmm. I hate this and I hate that, then ah, not so much. Well, you know what? Right? If a person doesn't that's like immigrants, their that's their right. They have a reason exactly. for not liking. They don't. They have a reason for not liking immigrants. You know, like for me, That's their journey. for me, I'd I'd close the border today. No refugees, no immigrants. Take care of our own first before we go out and take care of others. And fine. You know, I don't know what you expect me to say to that. It's like, okay, that's your yeah. journey. That's what you believe. I may not believe the yeah. same thing. The person next to who's mm-hmm. who's listening here may not. Um, believe the same thing the point is Mm -hmm. that we all have an opportunity here to tap into what's energy what some people call god okay and we all have an opportunity to tap into that energy okay so how do do we energy how do we tap into it what's the secret the same way you spoke whatever brings you joy puts you in connection to that energy Right, you said you had a few things when when that you wanted yeah. to do, and you've done them all. Right. What directed you to that? Because it was fun. 
because of your passion that you had, because your heart was fulfilled. Because right? I had great Isn't parents. Isn't that why you do what you do? Because I have great parents who, who led me down what I believe to be the right path of life. The right path for you. And the right path for Aren't my brother. Aren't you enjoy doing what you do? I love it. I love it. Hey, there you go. Yeah. But I made there it happen. I made it happen. No one else made it happen Excellent. for me. I'm not, what, say that last part again. I said no, it happen. no one made it happen for me. I agree. So we don't yeah. really disagree. It's semantics, but I'll tell you what, whatever your passion is, yeah. the whole universe supports what you do. If, just think about the world. Rob, if we had the whole, if everybody on the planet was in their joy, mm -hmm. doing what they love, it would be a much different world. We wouldn't have we wouldn't have other people trying to take from other people what what we think is theirs because they'd already be satisfied they'd already be, be in their own energy. But I the think the thing about it is there's an emptiness out there. People don't are not taught to be empowered. They are not taught to to have. They were not given the foundation that you were given. I was not given the foundation that you were given. I had a, I went into my twenties never mm -hmm. not even knowing how to make a decision. And, and absolutely no self-esteem whatsoever. I had to make my journey to find yeah. that in myself. And therein lies the challenge for, those, for so many of us. And that guidance can come through me or, you know, somebody else goes to church, as you said, or somebody else reads another book or somebody mm -hmm. else decides, um, you know, that going to Africa to help those people. Right. Right? They set up a foundation. They're going mm -hmm. to bring water to a village. Yep. There are people that do that, and yep. that is their passion. I'm just so glad it's not me. <laughs> I get to do what I love here. But do you go... Do you see what I mean? Yeah, I, I see what you mean. And and I think what has... Uh, I'm, I'm having a big problem with you classifying yourself as a goddess. I am having a big mm. problem with that. Because you're just a mortal. You found a little. <laughs> you you found a niche in life. You found so, a way to make money and be successful. That's great, but to call yourself yeah, a god, it. but to call yourself a goddess, I think there's a bit of ego problems there. I think a goddess is a person who feels empowered and is connected to their source. I just happen to be female doing it. I so, believe that the god energy is in each one of us. Well, of course it is. I believe that. You, all right then. Then you're the god, and I'm the god. No, I'm What's not. I'm not a god. I am. I am not well, a god. That's your opinion of yourself. Well, I don't have an I don't ego want, problem. I don't have an ego problem. Then why call yourself a goddess? Why not? I'm in. I feel good about myself. I feel good about who I am. I feel good about how I look. I take care of myself. Okay, so that doesn't I make you a goddess. And I love myself. That doesn't make you a goddess. Why, why it makes you a good it? person. Because you're mortal. Me a you're mortal. I am only mortal in this physical body in this lifetime, and then I go on, and so do you. That you believe, but that has never been proven. Well, I don't care if it hasn't been proven. I know what my truth is. Is it a truth or I is it a fantasy? Somebody... It may be your fantasy, but it's not mine. Well, I have connected with those who have crossed over. Maybe you haven't. Maybe you don't even believe in that, but that's mm -hmm. okay. And it's okay that you don't like that I call myself a guy. I don't really care. Doesn't matter to me what you what you think or that you think I'm from ego because I know exactly where I'm at. But don't you don't you think that other people may find it a little strange to say the least that you consider yourself a goddess? Not up to this point. Actually, when I meet people mm -hmm. And they get to know me, or they're taking my classes, or they're enjoying it. They're walking out of there feeling like the goddess also. Why not? Interesting. If more people had more confidence mm -hmm. in themselves, who understood who they are, mm -hmm. who stood in their own power, really, seriously. <laughs> because the reason that there's so much narcissism and so much ego and so much hatred and so much anger is because people don't, uh, they're being ruled by their own ego. They don't understand who they really are. So would you say you that, that part of your mission is to be partially a psychologist to the people who come to you for, for advice? 
Well, it, ha- it, it turns out that way. Okay. And um, because we have to separate and, you know, the, one of the questions, you know, and I, I like to tell people that we work with angels. Mm-hmm. People like that. It feels good to them. And it's energy. It's all energy. It's all a part of that same energy. Right. And um, um, we, have the, we have, like, the ego on one shoulder mm-hmm. that none of this is possible. I can't have everything I want. I can't be the goddess. And we have the, the spirit, the angels on the... You remember those cartoons? Um, <laughs> The devil on one shoulder, the the angel on the other, and and the devil is just the ego that tells us none of this is possible. The the angels are on the other shoulder, which is that spiritual connection, that very powerful energetic connection that that tells you that just align yourself with love. And when you align yourself with love, amazing things happen. When you love yourself, mm-hmm. you can heal. When you when you love yourself, you can help others. Sure. When you love yourself, you bring more love to you. And you it's can energy. and you can see this beyond a shadow of a doubt around Christmas time. People yeah. dig deeper into their yeah. pockets for money. They go to the food yeah. bank. They work at the yeah. different shelters, and they call it the Christmas spirit. And I, I just wish we could have that spirit. All year round. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Isn't um, it amazing, too? Because there's a portion that month of December yeah. where people are just full of that, you know, big smile, happiness mm-hmm. type of thing. And and like you said, if we could just hold that in our hearts, it's yeah. almost as if, if society gives us permission to do that in December. And the rest of the year, you know, you got to work like a dog. Yeah. Um, um, you know, it's it's not the norm for people to be in bliss. It is not the norm for people to live in love, joy, peace, prosperity, and health. It's not the norm, and that's unfortunate. And it should be the norm. We we make life complicated because we we um, um, listen more to the ego that tells us we're limited, and and we're really not. I've been on both sides of this yeah. fence, so. To me, it is such a reality um, uh, from where I was mm-hmm. to where I am now. And, and that's, why it, 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 this, that's why I do what I do, the way you do what you do with a passion. This has yeah. been a wonderful conversation that you and I have had. I love it. I love the questions. I love looking at things from both sides. But this is, this is what has been proven to me over and over and over again because I was that person i was i'd be in the grocery store getting my groceries and have an anxiety attack and have to run out of the grocery store and end up in my bedroom in a fetal position crying my eyes out and i was going to a psychologist i was getting that counseling and they couldn't help me Mm -hmm. so i've seen both sides of this so basically you you helped yourself exactly and the journey that journey to love myself, mm-hmm. you know, and, and I don't believe there's some big white God outside of us that, you know, if you don't do good, you're going to get lightning bolts thrown at mm-hmm. you. Uh, I believe that God is the energy of love. And so why not be the goddess, right? I disagree with you. I disagree with you. <laughs> We've I got to take that. our news break at the bottom of the hour. Please stand by. Exo Nation, my, Linda West. My, my definition of goddess is yeah. different than the dictionary, and what do I care, you know? Exo Nation, Linda I West is our guest this hour, www.lindawest-medium.com, and I'll be back on the other side of the short break as we continue here in the Exo with Linda West from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't go away. TV show with Rob McConnell is coming to screens of all sizes. UFOs, ghosts, alien abductions, psychic phenomenon, lake monsters, angels, Bigfoot, unsolved mystery, and all subjects from within the world of the paranormal to the science of parapsychology and beyond. The Exxon TV show with Rob McConnell, www.exxonetv.com. 
is a Relmar McConnell Media Company and Benedict Productions production. The Holistic Cancer Foundation is a new nonprofit foundation that focuses on a holistic approach to cancer that includes physical, mental, spiritual, and political aspects. Cancer education, research, and care are provided for all types of cancer patients. You can listen to interviews with cancer doctors and survivors and read research on holistic aspects of cancer at www.holisticcancerfoundation.com. That's www.holisticcancerfoundation.com. The scientist and the mystic have been on an age-old, relentless search with one thing in common. They seek truth. Their paths converge in the 40,000-year-old practice of shamanism, an ancient science delving to the quantum level of life, facilitating healing, manifestation, and evolution. I'm Gwilda Wiecka, the founder and director of Path Home Shamanic Arts School, a unique Colorado State certified occupational school, training shamanic practitioners and teachers. We also provide classes for empowering personal lives through shamanism. Our certification classes are in week-long segments, enabling international participation, and online classes and long-distance shamanic healing sessions are available. Come discover the science of magic in the limitless world of shamanism. www.findyourpathhome.com Wouldn't you love to know the secret to everything? Well then, meet Dr. Kimberly McGeorge and her cutting-edge breakthrough knowledge that combines science with possibility. Dr. Kimberly brings real-life answers and healing to those open to alternative solutions. She teaches solution-based programs and classes that will change all areas of your life forever. Specializing in conscious creation, intuitive readings, and energy medicine, you can rapidly shift health, relationships, business, and money and abundance challenges quickly. Receive her best-selling book, Secret to Everything, at no cost by going to secrettoeverything.com forward slash X zone. That's right. Transformation can start now. Just go to secrettoeverything.com forward slash X zone and receive Dr. Kimberly's book for free. Welcome back, everyone. This is the Exxon. I am Rob McConnell. We're coming to you live and around the world on the Exxon Broadcast Network, the Starcom Radio Network, the Digital Broadcast Network, and the Digital Satellite Network. 1 800 610 7035 is worldwide toll free. Email exxon at exxonradiotv.com on all social media sites, Exxon Radio TV, and our main radio website where you can listen to the x 24 365 as well as our live broadcast Monday through Friday from 8 p.m. until midnight Eastern, x TV.com. Linda West is our guest this hour. Her website is Linda West-Medium. She's the, um, she's the author of Eight Keys, a special delivery message from the angels. And the angels that, that you communicate with... Um, are they the regular angels or are they the archangels? Um, you know, I, I've had so many people on the show who talk to angels. Uh, I'm surprised by the number of angels that are actually communicating with people. Well, it's, it's as we were speaking of earlier, everything is energy. And, and um, angels are just another mm-hmm. source of ener- energy. And you're literally tapping into the universal consciousness when you, when you tap into that. Angels are a wonderful way to do it because people like it, because it sounds good, and it's it's warm and fuzzy, Mm -hmm. and wow, I can get into that. Um, You know, if you tell somebody you're psychic, Mm -hmm. 
then all of you know a lot of people are like really oh that can't be true but if you tell people you're communicating with angels like oh well that that can't that's pretty cool so, so are we, the angels that ahead. are the angels the placebo effect the warm the uh, warm fuzzy feeling that allow you and others to get the message from the universe to the person um i like that the way you said that uh i've i've never quite looked at it mm -hmm. that way um when i do a reading on someone i'll right. first tap into seeing the guardian angels around them which which i i which i can do and i i see their aura and and that kind of thing but if we look at it from a higher frequency right. from a higher level of consciousness you know, it's all one with the rest of the universal energy. And and we are connected to the most powerful energy in the universe. I mean, we are a part of that. That's what flows through you. That's the life force gotcha. that flows through all of us. So, uh, um, yeah, I like to use angels because people are comfortable with that. And I like to communicate. And because we believe in them, they mm -hmm. are there. So it is, it is a wonderful way to tell, you know, especially when you're telling people, wow, you got three guardian angels around. But, it, but, and, but as I understand it, what, what they really are are just energy forces? It is energy. Yes, it is all energy. You know, when, when I first started doing it, you see, I was, uh, when I was a teenager, mm -hmm. I was in a, Pente uh, in a Pentecostal church situation. Right. So there's, you know, the deity and the God, and then there's Jesus, and then mm -hmm. there's the Holy Spirit. And, you know, sometimes when uh, when I'm in a group, there are some people who are insulted by, right. you know, you talk to angels, you should be talking to God, you know, as if there's an ego out there that, you know, we're insulting, which is, is a form for many people. You know, do, there are people that do believe that. But it's all the same energy. Mm -hmm. And, and um I like to use angels, as I said, because it makes people feel comfortable. And I call upon them myself. So, you know, whether, and I always feel like there's Archangel Michael is always around me. Hmm. And, and um, um, it, it, it's a protection, because I always know I'm protected. I travel all over the country. I'm sure you've done that, too. And, and I know I'm protected and watched over, and, and I know there's strength in this energy. We're, we're really working with such, we're really... We have three-dimensional minds. Some people are in four-dimensional minds. You interview all these people, mm -hmm. and everybody's got a way that they look at it. You know, but what was actually happening in 2015 is we are opening up to multi-dimensional energy out there. And, it's, and it, just because I can't explain it mm -hmm. completely, or you don't understand it completely, or I don't understand it completely right. doesn't mean that it's not there. But if there was this one universal force that you're talking about, why would there be okay. so many different religions, so many different beliefs? Like, if there was one central universal force, then everyone should believe the same thing when it comes to uh, the universal force, instead of all these splinters that we see around the world. Uh, wouldn't that be nice? But all right, not, um, yeah, I agree. It would be nice. And if there is only uh, one universal force, why isn't it? Well, because um, that would almost be too easy, wouldn't it? Because we are individuals, and and every single one of us mm -hmm. see things differently, see it through a different lens. What has and a lot of religions that have been created mm -hmm. start out quite sincere, and then and then it's a great way. To, to dominate and control people. Look at all the wars through the centuries. Yeah, plus it's a great way to make money. It's a cash cow. Exactly. Right. Uh, thank you for saying it. You're welcome. <laughs> I mean, absolutely. Yeah. You know, um, um, it's the richest organizations in the world. You see, if so, I if I can't understand, like everybody is revering this new pope because he's so people-minded, people-oriented. Yeah. You know, if he was the great pope that people claim he is, why doesn't he disband the Vatican, get rid of the riches, get rid of all their property, and give that money to the poor? Does he need a city? I don't disagree with you. You know, does, yeah. he, does he need a city? Come on. I don't disagree with yeah, you. Yeah, you know, I, 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 I just find it centuries ironic. Centuries ago, mm -hmm. I think religions were created to control people anyway. Centuries ago, when people were very ignorant, during the time of the, the Old Testament, mm -hmm. 
people were very ignorant, and they're pillaging, and they're raping, and they're stealing from their neighbors. And somebody, the rulers, the powers that be, have we got to come up with something here to keep these people in line. So they created, you know, this god, this this uh, entity that's mm-hmm. going to punish you if you, if you're not good. Well, it's a great way to control people. Yeah. But we are in 2015. We're in 2015. And, and energy is what keeps the planet in place. And if you talk to scientists, they mm-hmm. know everything is energy. Yeah. When um, uh, Einstein knew everything was energy and, and he believed that there was a power out there, it is a universal force. Right. If, 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 uh, for those of you who are listening out there, in my lifetime, and I'm 61, I've only seen, and this may, I hope this doesn't get too gross, but I've only seen one dead body. My mother passed away. I've only seen one. Mm-hmm. When I, when I, and this was before I was doing all the, uh, the spiritual stuff, before I understood a lot of this. But she was, uh, she was actually living, um, I'm from Ohio. She was living in Ohio. I was living in Arizona. Mm-hmm. And when she passed away, I, had a, I, I went to Ohio, and I went into the room where she was. They had her on a table. A sheet was covering her. And I looked at her, and I knew in that instant, it's like, that's not my mother. Her, it, 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 there's no energy there. There's no life force there. And, and um, uh, if, if we can just understand that this, this is the same energy that holds the planets in place. This is the same energy that flows through each and every one of us. There was a time when the Chinese wouldn't even study a dead body because the life force energy wasn't in it. And, uh, you know, I, I've studied uh, acupuncture, acupressure. Yeah. Uh, the way energy flows through the body is the mm-hmm. same way that blood flows through the veins. Let me ask you this. So when we... Go ahead. Let me ask you this. You're right. We're in the year 2015. We're a lot smarter than the ancients who wrote all these different religious philosophies. They needed some semblance of order. They needed some semblance of where we came from, what life was about. And, you know, I could see them creating what we have today in the various religions. However, if there's one universal force, why wasn't it that universal force that was adapted and used to explain all that was, all that is, and all that there is going to be if it is really there. Because everybody views the world through different eyes. And I think we, you know, and then, you know, the original, like you said, we got to get these people under control. We got to give them something to attach to. Well, you know, these books have been written and rewritten and right. rewritten and, and right. you know, by people who are like, hey, we got a good church thing mm-hmm. going on here. All right. All right. And, so and my question was, why wasn't this universal force, this universal um, okay. condition that you're telling us about tonight, why wasn't this adapted? Because that would have been the ideal moment, the ideal time when all this new age belief could have made such an important difference in the development of this planet. I agree. So why wasn't the it? The reason, why wasn't it? Yeah. That's an excellent question. And they put together the story based on what, what information they had. And now in 2015, we have science. Mm-hmm. And in the 1950s, we had Einstein. Mm-hmm. And, and we understand more about energy than we did before because our minds can comprehend more than we did before. I mean, there was a time we thought the planet was flat. Well, you know, I, I, look, right? at, I look at the great wonders of the ancient world, and I think that they were a lot smarter than we are giving them credit for. We well, still don't understand. Sure you know, we, we still don't understand the mechanics behind the Great Pyramid. We don't understand a lot. We still don't understand Stonehenge. So I to to think that the ancients were not as smart as we are now, they may not have been, and they certainly were not technologically as advanced as we are, but they were on the Somebody ball. Was. Exactly. And I don't believe in little green men from Alpha Centauri or Greys from Roswell, New Mexico. <laughs> I don't well, think I don't. No, th- no, now do we? Somebody was tapping into the higher frequency somewhere along the way to um, um, to, 
to be able to create that kind of thing. Or is it in that Arizona? Or is it that okay, the hum- Or is it that humanity actually has the ability to accomplish all this without any of the woo-woo factor? Um, I think if you are that intelligent, mm-hmm. the woo-woo factor is a given. When you I, are that wise, I, I think d- you can't help but understand the woo woo factor. All right, if that if that is a, if that is did. if that is the case, then why doesn't science accept any of the principles behind the paranormal? Uh, that I can't tell you. So it can't be. Uh, I'll tell you this, though, Rob. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you this because the questions are excellent. Mm-hmm. But what you're expecting is that everybody should think the same. And the reason we have so many different religions and the reason, I mean, you can go into a metaphysical store. Mm-hmm. As a matter of fact, I used to have a metaphysical store. There's angels Doesn't on this end. There's Buddha mm-hmm. on this end. There's, there's this on this end. There's incense over uh-huh. here. There's, you know, psychic, paranormal ETs over here. Yep. And, and the reason, it's like, it's like a smorgasbord. Mm-hmm. Every single soul gets to source, mm-hmm. gets to that amazing infinite energy in their own way. And, and all those ways, they may not work for you, mm-hmm. but somewhere it is touching someone's heart and someone's soul. When I go to a psychic fair or when I'm doing my teachings, I always mm-hmm. say, okay, Send people to me who need what I have. I don't want somebody who's looking for, like you said, the little green men or the mm-hmm. ETs. Not my thing. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, I don't, I'm not an expert in that field. Send me people that need what I have. Because we are such a variety of souls, because we, think, we have that capability to think and to open up our minds, we have a variety of ways to get to the same conclusion. Linda, our time is up for tonight. I want to thank you so much for joining us. Exo Nation, Linda West has been our guest this hour. www.lindawest-medium.com Oh, oh well. Everybody's entitled to their beliefs, but I... She should play hockey. You know what? She really should. Because she did more skating in this past hour than most of the NHL hockey players I've watched over the years. We'll be back on the other side of this commercial break as we continue here in the X-Zone from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't go away. <laughs> 